You're tuned into the first newscast devoted to the Highland Lakes area. Local team coverage on Tribune Headline News. Bringing you the stories you care about now. Hi everyone, I'm Connie Swinney. You've tuned us in on Northland Communications. It's cable channel 15. In today's broadcast, we have the latest on the Spicewood area brush fires continuing since the Labor Day weekend and help for families. Also, Bulldogs fight. It's a homecoming week for Burnett. As Spirit Week kicks off, the drought dries up certain activities like the bonfire. We'll explain. Those stories plus local sports in a moment. But first, assistance continues to pour in for families affected by the Spicewood area brush fire. No deaths have been reported. However, thousands of acres have been scorched and dozens of homes were damaged or destroyed. Hundreds of people in our viewing area were evacuated due to the thick smoke and possible fire danger. Now, volunteers have answered the call to help those in need. Our efforts right now are to organize volunteers uh, so that we can man the food and clothing bank and uh, be able to meet the needs of the fire victims uh, in that manner, as well as getting them registered for any possible assistance that may come down the road. Volunteers have set up shop at the Spicewood School just off Highway 71 in Burnett County as a temporary shelter and collection site for non-perishable food and clothing. The community has delivered. However, one of the biggest needs is more volunteers. There is a real uh, healing process in being able to help in a time like this. And we want to be able to let those people that want to help during this time to be able to uh, help. And uh, at the same time, we want various volunteers to help so that we don't get tired and overburdened. The Spicewood Community Center is looking for at least 10 volunteers each day. Please go to SpicewoodSchoolhouse.com to find out how you can help. Here's a roundup of other assistance locations. The Marble Falls Church of Christ has opened its door as a temporary shelter. We do have air mattresses and pillows and blankets and showers available and, and kitchen facilities if you need that. So um, just depending on who shows up, then we'll staff accordingly. The Burnett County Sheriff's Office is collecting hygiene products for families along with clothing and even items to comfort youngsters during a stressful time. The items can be delivered to the facility just off Highway 29 East in Burnett. Volunteers are then delivering those items to the Spicewood Community Center. The Marble Falls First United Methodist Church is collecting gift cards. Organizers there say cards in increments of $20 and $25 to grocery and department stores work best. We'll be right back after the break. We've got great football weather the next few nights. Details later in the forecast. Coach Larry Bergman takes a hands-on approach to coaching, and he takes that same approach to handling your car. So join Coach's team and give your car, truck, or boat the MVP treatment at Coach Wash, where our customers call the plays. Welcome back. It looks like we're getting a big break, at least from the searing heat. Here's Jared Fields with more. Hello everyone. Connie, this weather is perfect for the football games this week. Of course, the big rivalry game in Burnett is uh, Friday and the big pep rally is Thursday night. And for both, we should have pretty calm winds, clear skies, and all around beautiful weather. Here's the rest of your Highland Lakes forecast for Northland 15 and the Picayune TV. Thursday, we've got mostly sunny skies and a high near 91. And like I said, those winds should be calm out of the north between just 5 and 10 miles an hour. And then Thursday night, mostly clear with a low around 56. North winds, 5 miles an hour, becoming calm. And then Friday, sunny with a high a little bit higher of 93 degrees. Calm winds again, 5 and 10 miles an hour. And then Friday night will cool down to a low of 56 with mostly clear skies and calm winds out of the north at 5 miles an hour. And looking forward to the weekend, our highs will inch up day by day and approach the upper 90s again. Those lows will also rise to about 70. We'll have those complete details in tomorrow's weather, though. Until then, have a great day, everyone. For Northland 15 and the Picayune TV, I'm Jared Fields. Thanks, Jared. Here's Jennifer Fierro with what's coming up in sports. 
Rivalry week can only mean one thing. It's time to talk football. We're going to get you caught up on what's going on at Faith Academy coming up in sports. We are established. We are qualified. We are certified. We are knowledgeable. We are dependable. We are Ken's Heating and Air. Our people make the difference. It's rivalry week for the three area high school teams, but we're going to start with the Faith Academy Flames. And that's because the Flames are going to put their 2-0 record on the line when they travel to face Fredericksburg Heritage, which is 1-1 one one in their first two games. The Battle of the Rock dates back for several years. Faith Academy actually won 65-62 coming from behind to stun Heritage. And that means yet another historic chapter to this ongoing rivalry. We did get some words from head coach Russ Roberts about his thoughts going into this contest. Here's what he had to say. Well, they had no seniors on the team last year. Everybody was a junior, sophomore, or freshman. So literally everybody that played in that big shootout last year, the 65-62 game, everybody's back. So it's a very experienced team. They're very well coached. Coach Shipman does an outstanding job. His players are smart and they're aggressive and uh, they built a team back. And the one loss they had this year was the Dallas Covenant. Of course, Faith Academy can tell you about Dallas Covenant. Uh, they couldn't uh, 45 us last year, but they couldn't 45 uh, uh, Fredericksburg in that first game of the season. And they jumped on uh, San Antonio uh, Feast last week, which is a, a team that they tied and then lost, uh, beat in overtime last year. We're going to switch gears now and talk a little bit of cross country, and that's because the Marble Falls cross country team was at the Brushy Creek Sundown Relay Meet hosted by Cedar Park Vista Ridge last week. Of course, the team of Johnny Garcia, Jordan Wright, and Angel Guerrero came in third overall in a time of 23 minutes and 41 seconds. Meanwhile, Haley Stevens, Tess Johnson, and Sarah Stripling finished First overall in the junior varsity division for the girls in 30 minutes and 49 seconds. Both cross country teams will be in Lano this weekend when they run at the Lano cross country meet, which is at the high school, which starts at 8.30 for the girls and 9.30 for the boys. That's it for sports. I'm Jennifer Fierro. Connie, back to you. Jennifer, thanks. It's homecoming week for the Burnett Bulldogs, who take on the Marble Falls Mustangs on Friday. That means all the trappings of homecoming traditions can be seen throughout town. That includes mums and, of course, plenty of signs through town and in school buildings to get everyone fired up for the big game. If you wander over to Bulldog Stadium, you'll find some extra seating officials expect to have an overflow crowd. There are a few activities that will be slightly altered this week, and some of the changes have to do with the drought. Of course, the bonfire is canceled due to the extreme fire danger. However, the pep rally and parade will be right on schedule. Here's a look at the activities that are going to be happening on Thursday, September 8th at 7 p.m. The parade will start. There's a new route. It starts in the middle school parking lot, proceeds north on Main Street, west on 3rd to the top of the hill towards the high school. Right after that, the community-wide pep rally and balloon release. And that's all happening at Burnett High School. Burnett seniors will be allowed to purchase a wish message to be placed inside one of the balloons. That was Tribune Headline News. Stay tuned. The Picayune Roundup is next. Because experience matters. For home, auto, business, health, and life, we are here for you. When Galloway experts make top providers compete for your business, you win. The Galloway Insurance Team, since 1935. Burnett, Horseshoe Bay, and Marble Falls. Hello everyone, I'm Amber Weems. You've tuned us in on Northland Channel 15. This is the Picky and Roundup. In this week's episode, we share images of a gift in memory of a youngster who lost his life in a tragic accident. Also, a four-legged friend teaches a few lessons to students at Faith Academy. Those features in a moment. But first, as the smoke clears, we found a number of families in the Spicewood area temporarily evacuated to keep them safe from the recent brush fire danger. Now, Spicewood Elementary officials are accepting help from the community for those who have been displaced. They're accepting gift cards from restaurants, grocery and department stores to offer to families. They will also take cash, toiletries and gently used clothing for children. 
you can go to Spicewood Elementary to drop off items. The school is located just off Highway 71 on Spur 191. Our next feature is about a canine who has a way with kids. Students from Faith Academy recently met a Granite Shoals police officer and his faithful sidekick, Jopi. The duo not only made friends with a group of kindergarten students, but taught a few lessons about fighting crime. What this right here does is I can press this button and say I'm, I'm out of my car and I need Jopi to help me. I press this button and the door pops open and Jopi can come out and help me real fast. Oh my gosh! Wow! Jopi has been with a local agency for the past six years. In our final feature, a family gives back to school children after the loss of a loved one. We captured these images recently of an emotional ceremony at Marble Falls Middle School. Michaela Martinez was the first recipient of the You're the Best Bryce Forsyth Award this school year. Melissa and John Forsyth dedicated the award to honor their son Bryce who attended the school until he died the first day of spring break. He was killed in an all-terrain vehicle accident near his home. It was to honor our son who we lost uh, early March, March uh, first, first day of spring break. And um, Bryce used the, the phrase, you're the best. And so we spoke to the school and in his honor wanted to contribute to someone to help them have a, a better school year. And Because um, so Bryce was a real caring and uh, mm -hmm. outgoing person. Yeah, yeah. So Always this wanted is, to help somebody or yeah. just real sensitive. Mm -hmm. loved, loved life, loved everybody. And we just feel this would be uh, something that he'd really want to do. And uh, so we, we wanted to share his happiness and love with uh, a child. And we're going to do this every year. Give back to the community because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. everybody was so uh, generous to us after his accident. Yes. The award includes gift certificates for clothing and school supplies. After Bryce's accident, teachers and students chose to remember the youngster with commemorative t-shirts. The proceeds from the shirts assisted the family. Anytime that you have uh, something that uh, occurred so tragically, you know, for the Forsyths, uh, to lose a loved one like they did and, and then to want to carry on uh, kind of the um, persona of Bryce, the, the, just the way Bryce was, and to, to, to be willing to do what they did is just, it touched my heart and it was uh, it's just something that we're very proud of. and. and cannot thank them enough for what they've done. We're proud to bring you those images of a very inspiring story. Proof positive the Picayune does good for the community. Well, folks, that was your roundup. Thanks for watching us on Northland Channel 15. For the Picayune TV, I'm Amber Weems.